If you want to find out how I restored this vintage cocktail cabinet, then stay tuned, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Brenda, welcome to Phoenix Furniture Studio. In today's video, I'm working on this vintage cocktail cabinet for my client. They decided that they wanted this gorgeous golden yellow crane wallpaper on the inside. So I'll show you how I decoupaged the inside of the cabinet with that wallpaper and also how I restored the outside to show off this beautiful wood grain. So stay tuned and let's get into the video. This is the next piece that I'll be working on in the workshop. It's this gorgeous cocktail cabinet that I would say is from about the 1950s and as you can see it's got this gorgeous wood grain along the front which I'm hoping to really revive by taking off all that old finish, sanding it down and refinishing it. It's in really good condition. There's nothing majorly wrong with it. There's no damage. The veneer is all intact. It is just a case of stripping all that old finish off, refinishing the outside and then glamming up the inside. And then going inside, Hello, you've got the vintage cocktail sticks there. I'm gonna to need to get a replacement squeezer. I think I actually have one spare so I can pop that in. There's a mirror at the back, not a mirror down here. And I think I'm gonna get one cut to put in there because I really like it when there's the mirror at the back and the bottom. There's the mirror down there. So the plan is once you open this, all these surfaces you see here, these wood surfaces, are going to be decoupaged in a beautiful yellowy gold crane wallpaper. So it's going to look really natural and beautiful from the outside. And then once you open it up, that's when you're going to see this really striking paper. The original bulb is back there. So Stuart's job is going to be to, oh, it's focusing on me, rewire that. And the client potentially wants um, the client potentially wants some LED motion sensor lights, so we'll look into that. These handles are going and being replaced with more Art Deco style fan handles. And they're just coming down into the bottom. Just your standard cocktail cabinet bottom. So all of this is going to be decoupaged with that same wallpaper. You may have seen I've done a similar cocktail cabinet um, too now and I'll link to them in the cards up on the right so you can watch those if you want. And here is the Maker's Badge Turnage product. So I'll see if I can find out a bit about that and I'll let you know what I find out, if anything. My first job, before we start stripping everything, is going to be dismantling the uh, furniture piece. So we're going to take all of this apart, take the doors off, remove the hardware, and then it's much easier to work on when it's broken down into individual pieces. So let's get started with that.
I say this in all my videos, but if you want to save your back, get yourself a pet grooming table, second hand or Facebook marketplace. You just use the lever here to lift it or drop it. And it's the best thing for working at a good height so that you're not bending over or working at weird angles on the floor. So keep an eye out on Facebook Marketplace for one. The top's been dismantled and now I'm gonna take off the doors and then we can get started with stripping. So as you can see, I've separated all the different areas into bags so that I know where they need to go back and they're with the right screws as well. And that just helps me to make sure that nothing gets lost or mixed up. So I'll go through and clean each bag individually, spray paint each bag individually gold and work my way through it. So by the time I get to the end, everything's ready to construct and be nice and clean and gold. Uh, now that I've finished dismantling it, I'm ready to start stripping all the old varnish off. I'm gonna use Paramos to do that. So I'm just gonna apply a coat of that onto here, leave it to sit. I'm just using a cheap chip brush because this is gonna to go to the toxic waste at the dump when I'm done with it. So let's get on with stripping and then I'll scrape the stripper off and wash it down with acetone when I'm done. I finished sanding the cupboard fronts and the cabinets, so now I'm gonna move on to sanding. I'm gonna be using this sander, which I got on Amazon. It's only a cheap brand, I think it's called Pioneer, and it cost me about 130 pounds. But what I was trying to do was find a surf prep equivalent because we don't get surf prep here in the UK. I bought some, these are Festool, interface pads which are a bit spongy so that you can sand details and curves and not sand them down. I did buy two and you can stick them together and have it like extra spongy. So I've been using that with the sander and then a mesh sanding pad and actually I've been really enjoying it and I've been using it a lot more than I thought I would. Now, I think with Surf Prep, their foam abrasives and that sponginess, I think that can't be matched. I think that's what makes them completely unique. But this is what I found that gets me as close as that. I've never used a Surf Prep. I've seen it used loads by other people on YouTube who use them. Uh, this is a three by four size as well, which is the same size as the Surf Prep. It's got the button trigger here um, on and off and then you can set your speeds up here. It comes with this attachment as well which allows you to connect it to your hose for dust extraction. 
so this pops on this little bit here and then you can cut this down to fit your hose i've just left it as is and then pop my festool hose in here until it's snug so dust extraction works really well this is really comfortable in in my hand it's not too heavy it's not as aggressive as my festool sander i've got the rotex 150 and that just will eat through finish um, and it's a lot more powerful than this is but this is really good for just sanding into corners or scuff sanding or if you've not got a lot of material that you need to get through so yeah as i say i've been using this a lot more than i thought i would and i'm actually really enjoying it so if you want links i'll pop them in the description below as i say i got it off of amazon as i did the interface pads you don't have to use these with it you just pop it onto here like that so you could have super squishy or just the one so i'm going to go with just the one to sand um the cupboards that i'm doing now that i've already stripped back and that's an 80 grit, but I'm gonna go with, hmm, I'm gonna go with 120 grit uh, mesh sandpaper, and I'm gonna give these a, a sand down. So I'm gonna do 120, then 180, and then they'll be ready for their finish. So let's get sanding. Everything's been sanded down now and wiped with mineral spirits to get rid of all that sanding dust. And now I'm gonna go in with this man's extra tough primer. So it's a water-based primer and I'm gonna use it in conjunction with their varnish. So I'm just gonna apply a coat of this with a foam roller and then I'm gonna leave it for a couple of hours and give it a coat of the um, extra tough varnish. That's everything gone over with the primer now. How gorgeous that wood grain is looking. So that's how it's gonna look once it's got the new finish on. Oh, I just love that. So beautiful. That one, I must say, is a little bit boring and dull compared to the others, but yeah. And this one as well, that's all been done. We'll just leave that to dry now. Today I'm going to carry on with decoupaging the inside. I did start without you because I needed to get my head around some math. So the wallpaper I'm using is printed in a wall mural style. So it's these long sheets of paper that are printed like that. Can I think you can see that as in a wall mural? So when I ordered it, I had to sort of work out as if this was all flat pieces and how the wallpaper would fit across there. If that makes sense, it probably doesn't, but it's not your regular wallpaper where you just get rolls and rolls of it and then you can just book match it. This is printed as one mural and then you have to fit it together when you're breaking it down. So I started off this bottom piece here that you can see I've cut here that starts there this bottom piece goes here now I'll carry on with that piece on the back panel and then the next strip of the wall mural will carry on going around like that and then these upper bits will start going up into here and go all the way around. So 
It sounds complicated because it is, in my brain at least, but I think I've got my head around it now. So I'm ready to bring you along. So I'm gonna finish off doing this bit here and the back panel, and then I can move on to doing the top part. So let's go. And hopefully I don't make any mistakes because this is made to order and it's really expensive. <laughs> so when I put oh, this on here, I need to know what part is gonna show through. And I think I'm in luck because where this goes from dark to light, I think this is the bit that's gonna be hidden behind where it joins. And this is the bit that's gonna be on show. So if I start my wallpaper along this line going that way, I should get a good clean match to the corner. Okay, and in doing that, I've realized I've just messed up. So if I try and match this pattern onto the back now, this bit is already cut out here. So when I stuck this down, I should have cut it here as if the pattern was carrying on down this way. So cut it there, stuck that bit there, and then it would have carried on the pattern. So. I need to try and get this up without damaging it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it down with water, just a fine misting of water, and then use my heat gun. It's only been stuck down with PVA glue. Oh, so I'm really hoping it comes up with not many issues, but let's try. Oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> that came up relatively easily without damaging the wallpaper too much. And I think that's because it's quite a thick wallpaper. Now I just need to measure up and re-stick. I might just have to get a bit for the back there, but that's fine, I can do that without an issue. So when I have that up against the back board, that needs to match up there. So, I need to get this straight first so that I can get the straight on there. Right, plan of action in place. Let's cut this down first. Right, we'll just move over here where I've got a bigger cutting mat. Right, let's go with that. That should give us a straight cut. That'll be a straight edge. So I can use that to determine how much of this I'm keeping using that. Okay, and that is all lined up then. And then again, the same on this side. Right, I think that was crisis averted, very luckily. I'm just using this um, PVA glue to adhere the wallpaper to the furniture. So normally I apply it to the back of the paper first, so it soaks in a bit. I find this is generally the best way to try and avoid getting bubbles, and then put it on here. and then just using a wallpaper smoother to go over that. Now, because we're moving on to the next part, I'm getting the two of three mural print. So then this should line up. Perfect, there we go. I'm gonna cut that across there.
Now that I've sanded the edges of the paper so that they're smooth with the wood, I'm going to detail the edges with um, Frenchine Gorgeous Gold Finishing Powder. I've got some left over in here which is mixed with a little bit of silver and I just use the French Chic Finishing Coat to mix it in. So normally I do a 50-50 mix of the gold and the silver but because I want it to be a warmer tone I'm gonna pop that gold in there with the existing mix, a little bit of the finishing coat and give it a good mix and see what the consistency is like. Oh yeah, perfect. I'm just gonna pop a little bit more. Look at that gorgeous gold tone. And that should be perfect now. How gorgeous is that? Right, so. Let's get painting with the gold. I'll start with the edges on here. So let me get my vice clamp set up. So I'll just do this around all the edges of the, the doors and also along some of the top of the cabinet. And it gives quite good coverage with just one coat because I've used quite a bit of powder in the mix. I'm going to be stenciling the doors now. So what I've done is I've sanded the old finish off and I'm just using some mineral spirits to wipe away the sanding dust. And I'm going to be using the Monstera Leaf stencil to stencil the inside of the doors, which is what my client wants. They want the stencil. So I'm going to position that there and then flip it over and do the next one above. First off, I'm going to measure what halfway is on the doors as our halfway mark. So around about there for the first one and then flip it over and above. Actually, I think I might go a bit above because then I can make it look like this one's coming out of that one. So I'm going to go there, down so it doesn't move. I'm going to be using the French Chic French Shimmer mix that I made earlier that I painted on the edges of the cocktail cabinet and I'm just going to dab it on with that but I'm going to do that with some tape so that the bristles are compacted together and I saw this trick um, done by Connie over at Faf Designs. I'll link her channel in the description so go check her out. She does some great uh, furniture painting. Um, I love her, her style so that will make a nice pouncing motion. And this is just a Klingon R16 brush that I'm using. And because I want to flip this over onto the other side, I'm just going to go and wash that side off so it doesn't make a mark when I flip it over. I'm going to start working on the outside again. Uh, if you remember, the last thing that we did was put some of that wood primer on. So I'm going to use my 
Pioneer Work Sander. I've got 240 grit sandpaper on there. Oh, pardon me. And I'm gonna go over all of the outside, just to give it a bit of a scuff sand. And then once I've done that, I'm going to start giving it a couple of coats of this Gilboys hard wax oil. Now I've, I'm, I'm subscribed to Gilboys on YouTube and I've seen their videos, but I saw Cole at Flip It Nation, his most recent video, he recommended this hard wax oil. So I thought I'd give it a try off the back of his recommendation. So I believe it's just quite, it's just apply it with a cloth or a brush and then wipe away the excess, so nice and easy. I'm gonna do all the wood outside, any exposed wood on the inside and the sh um, doors as well. So let's crack on with the scuff sand. I don't know if you can see that there and who knows what I was doing when I was applying that. Uh, but it looks like I've just thrown that primer on at it rather than brushed it on. And that's exactly why I'm scuff sanding because I couldn't see that before I started scuff sanding. So now I can smooth that out before I lay my hard wax oil on. Otherwise I'd put the hard wax oil on and then there'd be this really ugly blemish. So on with the scuff sanding. I'm happy with the scuff sand, so it's time to give everything a wipe down with some mineral spirits. This will also show me if there's anything that I've missed when I've scuff sanded. So what I hadn't noticed is that gold that's overlapped there when I've been painting. So I'm gonna to need to sand that back before I apply the oil. There's just a few other spots I'm not happy with. Don't know if you can see that. I think there's some old finish left on there. So I need to sand that out. Also there. And then just on the side here, this bit here, that just needs to be sanded. So I'm going to do all of that and then another round of mineral spirits and then hopefully we're good to go. Oh yeah, that's much better. I'm just using 240 grit because I don't want to go too harsh. Um, I'm just trying to take that last bit of finish that's left. So that difference that you can see there, that's just where I've gone through the primer, that primer layer that I put down, but that, that should be a problem. I'm now going through and spraying all of the hardware with this red primer. I find this is really good for adhesion. So I do the red primer and then I'll follow it up with the gold. Just working through the bucket of hardware here, which I've all labeled up and I'm keeping this bag with it when I paint it so I know exactly what it is that I'm painting and where it needs to go back when I'm finished. Just giving each piece a good scrub with a wire brush just to get off any rust or anything that may be on there and just to rough up the surface a bit for the primer to adhere to. Pull this on here, this is easier to work on. This red primer also dries really quickly. So by the time I got to these pieces here, I was ready to circle back round 
and I can flip that over and start doing the other sides now. Okay, so I'm going to leave all of these to dry properly now and then tomorrow we'll start on um, giving them a few coats of gold. My job this morning is going to be to start putting everything back together, attaching all the hinges and the door fronts. I've got my bucket of bags with all the pieces labelled up so it should be fairly straightforward to know what goes where and just put it all together. So let's work our way through the bucket and see how it looks once it's all put together. This is where we are at the minute. It's all reconstructed. I'm just waiting on some new handles, but I'm not entirely happy with all the variations in tone of the wood. So I think what I'm gonna do is I've got these two Mohawk toner sprays. I've got a light walnut and I think is it just, perfect brown. So I'm going to start with the light walnut and give it a spray. You can probably see more on that side. It's just a bit patchy. So I want to try and even it all out. And as I say, I'll start with the light walnut toner spray, see how that looks and then possibly go over with the light brown. I don't feel like the light walnut made enough of a difference. So I'm gonna go in with the perfect brown now and see what that does. Oh, I like that. That's making it nice and rich. Right, after the debacle yesterday of not being happy with how the finish had turned out, it was splotchy, it was uneven, it was, I just could never ever send it to my client like that and be happy with it looking like that. So, yesterday, took everything apart, re-sanded it completely, down back to raw wood veneer, and put a layer of Osmo, not Osmo, put a layer of Fiddy's hard wax oil on much happier with how it looks now. So, plan of action today is I'm gonna reconstruct everything, put it all back together, and then put another coat of finish on. And I think I'll go for a third one, just because I, I really like how that looks. It only says to do two on the can, but personally I prefer three. So, yeah, I'm gonna reconstruct everything and do any of the gold detailing that I sanded off and then we'll go in with another coat of the hard wax oil. Fingers crossed, we don't have another drama. Can't be doing with dramas. Don't like a drama.